I'm Joshua Bardwell, and this is episode four of my Black Box 101 tutorial series, where I teach you how to use Black Box to tune and troubleshoot your quadcopter. If you haven't watched the earlier episodes in the series, I strongly suggest you go check out the playlist link down in the video description and start watching from the beginning. Uh, the series builds on each other, and if you dive in in the middle, you're likely to end up more confused than you were when you started. But it's up to you. In the previous episode, I talked about what the P term does, and the next thing that I want to do is I want to show you some in-flight examples of the P term in action so we can make it real, all the sort of theoretical stuff I talked about in the previous video. But before I talk about the P term, there's one thing I have to do first, and that's what we're going to talk about in this video. I have to sync up and organize the flight video and the black box logs. And that's it's not the super sexy thing that you really want to learn, but it's a very, very important thing that you have to learn if you're ever going to actually make use of this data. Syncing up flight video with black box logs is incredibly important. Uh, one reason why it's important is that the black box logs themselves are often hard to interpret without looking at the actual video of the copter in flight. If you see that the stick deflects to the left or to the right, right later, let me play this forward a little. What's the copter doing? Well, okay, so I just punched out clearly, but other than that, it can be really hard to tell how how hard of a right turn am I making? What's is the copter oscillating or is it visible? You really need the actual flight data, and the best case scenario is a GoPro or, or other high def camera with audio, but even DVR footage is better than nothing. You're going to finish a day of flying, and you're going to have a bunch of logs. The other thing is that without the video, the flight video, it can be kind of hard to tell which log is which. And so being able to look at the video and see, oh yeah, that was the one where I crashed into that tree, right? That's that's a very useful thing. So you got to be able to sync up the logs with the video, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's talk for a minute about how uh, Betaflight saves the logs. If you're using an onboard SD card, what you're going to find is that at the end of your flight session, you're going to have a bunch of logs. In Betaflight 3.1, the logs actually end with .bfl extension. They used to end with, I think it was either .txt or .log. I don't remember. It's been a while and I forget things quickly. Uh, but they're going to be numbered sequentially, log 1, 2, and so on, counting up. I strongly recommend that if you're going to go out and do some tuning, that you delete all the log files off your SD card or move them off to another folder before you go out there. Because you'll notice that all of these files have a date of 12-1-2015 and a time of 12 a.m. The reason for that is that your flight controller doesn't have a real-time clock on it, so it doesn't know what the day and date is. It has no way of knowing that. And so the timestamp on all of these is always the same, and that's not a useful way then to tell, oh yeah, that one, I took that one on Saturday and this one on Sunday. Uh, you just Go out there with an empty SD card. When you get back at the end of the day, dump them all off to a folder with a name like this, February 13, and maybe a little description of what you were doing, perhaps, or at least just the date, though. And that way, it'll be easy for you to know which day these logs came from. If you just leave the SD card in and let them fill up, you, what you end up having to do is you work backwards. You say, okay, this was the last flight of Sunday, and you kind of got to work backwards and if you're, if you're clever and careful, you can kind of figure it out, but it's kind of a hassle. So it's best to organize this stuff from the beginning up front and make life easier for yourself. Do the same thing with your video files. Again, I've got all of these together in the same subfolder. These are all the flights from this day, and here are all the logs from this day. And therefore, I can kind of, I can, I can get, this is a tough job, but it makes it just that little bit easier. If you have an onboard data flash chip, you're not going to get files like this out. What you're going to get is a single big file that you download, and it's got a bunch of logs in it. I can't demonstrate that to you. I don't even think I have an example of that. If you have an onboard data flash chip instead of an SD card reader, what you're going to get is a single big file with a bunch of flights in it. And there will be a pull-down menu right here in the upper right where you can select log 1, log 2, log 3. Uh, eventually, the uh, the SD card will fill up, or the uh, the data flash chip will fill up, and there won't be any more logs. So that's going to be slightly different for you. What you're probably going to want to do is you're going to be downloading those files in the field because you won't have enough size storage on your data flash chip to hold even a whole day of flying, unless you set the logging rate to a really low rate, which you definitely shouldn't do. If you have an open log device, uh, in other words, you're connected to a serial UART, uh, with an open log device and an SD card, then the only difference is going to be that these files are going to keep counting up forever. 
basically you would have to completely reset the open log device by flashing the EEPROM in order to reset the numbering. So instead of you seeing log 001, 234, and then you erase all the files and it starts over from log 001, I believe the open log device keeps counting up uh, basically for the life of the device. That's the only difference there. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to start working my way through these files and I'm going to find the first one that actually has any meaningful content in it. Okay, this is video number one. Okay. Now we're going to fly like this. Okay, so, yeah, so this video has some actual flying in it. Okay, great. So this is the one I'm going to start with. And uh, you saw me introducing the video there. This is video one with an audio recording on my GoPro, putting some kind of a marker in the video to help you remember what you were doing at that moment. Like, I just raised my P gains, and I'm going to go see how that flies. And then leave your thoughts at the end before you turn your camera off, so that as you're reviewing the footage later, it's not just one flight after another, and you have no freaking idea what was going on there. You can even point your, if you're working with a laptop, you can even point your GoPro at the, at the laptop screen to record what your PIDs were for the flight. Or you'll see I've got something I've done with the Betaflight 3.1. Let me just show you this real quick. Betaflight 3.1 OSD. Betaflight 3.1 has the ability to put the PIDs on screen of the OSD in real time while you're flying. And that is super, super useful for the kind of video I'm making here. But also if you're trying to train yourself to tune PIDs and you want to look at the effect that different PIDs are having, putting them right there on screen in the DVR is a fantastic way of doing it. So anyway, GoPro 0101 is the one I'm going to start with. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the moment in the video where the uh, the flight starts. But the problem is that uh, the Black Box Explorer won't let me scroll through the video without... Can I? Can I, I can't scroll through. No, it won't let me do it without actually having a log file loaded. So I'm going to go back and I'm just going to load up a log file. And we'll just start with log number one. Log number one is only three seconds long. So I'm going to guess that that is not my flight log. So let's go ahead and open log number two. Log number two is two minutes and six seconds. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to scroll, uh, scrub, if you will, if you to use the video editing term, scrub through the video and try to find the point where I start flying. And you'll see I've come to the end of the log and I haven't reached it yet. So I can just play forward here. Unfortunately, there's no way to scrub through the video itself. You're always scrubbing through the log. And if the log ends before the video does, then there's nothing to do. Um, I suppose what you could do is you could say start the log at, start the log here right at the very end. So we're at two minutes into the video and the flight hasn't even started yet. So I'm gonna say start log here and that will make two minutes, I guess, be the beginning of the log. And now I can scroll through the next two minutes of, of the uh, video. But again, no. Oh, there we go. Now I got into the air. So I'm going to try to find the point where I arm the copter. So here it looks like, nope, I'm flying. I'm going to press the space bar to play. And I'm going to listen for the beep that tells me that I armed the copter. If you don't have a buzzer on your copter, you can listen for the sound of the motor starting. Or if your if your props are in view because of where your camera angle is, then you could look for the you could actually watch the prop start spinning. You can also sometimes see the grass blow around or something like that as a sign that you've armed. But a beeper is really the best way to know that you've armed. Let's listen. Okay, there. This copter. This copter doesn't have a beeper on it, does it? But we heard the motor start. Now, in order to get the exact moment right where the where the copter armed, I'm going to put the speed down to 50%. If you put it below 50%, you don't get audio anymore. So 50% is the slowest you can go and still have audio. And again, I'm going to listen. And I'm going to press the start log here button at the very moment it starts. Now let's just check and see how precise that is. Seems pretty good. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to watch the sticks and there will be a moment where I throttle up to take off and the first couple of stick movements I make will, will sort of indicate the copter's movement and I'm going to see if they seem synced up. 
I'm still at 50% speed, by the way. So you see how the copter, I started to try to level the copter out by pushing the stick to the right. Let's just see if that seems synced up to, to us. Eh, not quite. Did you see that the copter moved slightly out of sync with the stick? The copter sort of recenters before the stick does. So that suggests that the stick needs, the log needs to slide to the left. The log needs to be a little bit earlier. I'm just going to move the log just a couple of clicks earlier. I'm going to scroll back and I'm going to see how it syncs up. That's pretty well synced. So now let's just keep watching at the moment that we begin flying. And the number one thing I like to do here is I like to listen to the sound of the motors. Also, if you do very sharp stick movements like flips and rolls, watching the roll stick or the or the pitch stick as you enter the movement uh, can help you get the sync right. But I find the number one way to ensure that the sync is to correct is to listen to the motors go up and down as the throttle goes up and down and see if they seem to be synced up. See that moment there where I dropped the throttle and the motors went down and the stick moved really in sync with the sound. It seems like we got a pretty good match here. Yeah, the match seems really good here. Uh, the, the stick is moving in sync with the sound of the motors. It seems really good. There's a problem you're going to run into if you're using DVR footage instead of GoPro footage, and that is that, as I discussed in another video, the some DVRs, Fat Shark DVRs specifically, but I think they're not the only ones who do it, they drop frames at times. They mostly drop frames when the video gets very bad and they lose the sync pulse in the video, but I've seen them drop frames even when the video is very clear. So if you're working off of DVR footage, you may find that if you sync very precisely at the beginning of the footage, it, the, it's out of sync at the end and you might need to slightly adjust the sync if, if that really matters to you. So now let's go up to 100% and let's just take a look at the flying here. And I'm watching the sticks and I'm just seeing that the sticks seem to match really well with, uh, with what I see the copter doing. So sharp moves like this roll to the right that I just did are a great way to check sync. Let's just go back to 50% speed. Or we could even go lower, but I really do like to hear the motors during this phase. Watch the stick and watch the copter. Yep, they seem really nicely in sync. The other thing you can do is you can go to the end and watch the disarm. And this is especially useful if you have switch arming because the disarm event will be very snappy and precise. If you have stick arming, it may be a little hard to find the exact moment where you disarmed. But if you watch the disarm, we should see that the sticks disappear right at the moment where the copter touches down and you hear the motor stop. If you do enough black box log analysis, you're going to end up with a bunch of videos and a bunch of black box logs. And, and once you've done the work of figuring out which log goes with which video, you're going to want a way to record that data so you don't have to reconstruct it later. You don't want to have to do this work twice. Uh, what I recommend you do is that you take the name of the video file. So this is GoPer0101. And you go over to your black box logs and you name the log file with the name of the video file it goes with and the timestamp 178.623, the timestamp in the video file where the log starts. And the reason I suggest you do it this way is that if you have multiple flights within a single video file, so you land, you disarm, you change your PIDs, you rearm, you go fly. If you have multiple flights within a single video file, there's gonna be multiple logs at different points in that file. So you name the log after the video file and the timestamp where the log starts. And that way, and then you could even move your video files into the same folder as your logs so they all stay together. Uh, that's a way of then organizing this data so that you don't have to go back and redo the work of figuring out what's what. So if you find that the video file, the log ends before the end of the video file, just keep playing the video file forward, find the next flight, and start working your way forward through these logs, finding the next one that matches up.
And then you just work your way through a whole day of flying. And eventually you've got all your logs named with where they go in the videos and you can do your analysis. Well, that's going to bring us to the end of this session. Now you know how to take a day's worth of flight logs and a day's worth of flight video and sync them up so that you can start doing your analysis in a sort of an organized way. This is a really annoying thing process that take it's really tedious and really annoying and i wish there was an automated way of doing it like i've imagined what if what if the uh buzzer beeped in a certain code you know like your modem used to beep when you were dialing up you know in the old days of dial up what if it beeped some kind of a code that was embedded in the audio of the of the gopro video that then the black box log explorer could look through the video and find that code and automatically sync it with the right log file gosh that would be great maybe someone will invent that but they haven't we have to do it by hand and so it's like brushing your teeth it sucks but you got it for those of you who like brushing your teeth yeah good you're weirdos but <laughs> it's like brushing your teeth it sucks but you got to do it um there you go Thanks for watching. Hope this was educational. And in the next one, after I've gone through and done all of these freaking things, in the next one, we will be looking at the P term and watching it in action. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for watching. And as always, happy flying.